First question, why do I wake up in the morning with morning wood? Should I be worried? Uh, why do I not wake up with morning wood? And should I be worried? It's a great question. So it's sometimes morning wood occurs, sometimes it doesn't. Erections are spontaneous at night. Typically that's based on your rapid eye movement. So it gets really sciencey very quickly. But the idea is that some blood flow and different nervous systems in our brain run at different times. And so depending on when you wake up and what cycle of sleep you're in, how well you slept, how, how if something wakes you up or startles you, maybe not have an erection, but at the end of your REM cycle or your rapid eye movement sleep, you get an erection. So some mornings you'll wake up with an erection because that signal's going. Some mornings you may not, depending on what cycle you're in. The other part of that is testosterone increases and has a big spike right in the morning and testosterone is a big piece of our erections. So if, uh, if you wake up in the middle of the night, might not be as inclined to have an erection or as, as it's common to have an erection, but first thing in the morning, four or five, 6 a.m., very, very likely. Also having the urge to urinate, which you typically wake up with a full bladder, causes compression on the nervous system, can stimulate those nerves to fire to the, uh, the penile response and actually have an erection at that time. Good question. So if you do have morning wood, should you be worried? No, it's a normal response. It does signify that your nervous system's working and your blood flow is working, so that's a good thing. If you wake up without morning erections ever, could it be a sign that you have low testosterone? Yes, it could. Could it be a sign that maybe you have poor blood flow? Yes, it could. And the way to evaluate all of those things is to be seen by a medical professional and have all of that looked into. But that's a question that I ask guys in the office is, are you having morning erections or nocturnal erections anytime throughout the night? Next question, why does my drive stop when I'm stressed out or tired? Uh, I'm assuming that the, referencing the sex drive, but it can also be any drive in general. So there's a good reason for this. When you're stressed out, when you're tired, uh, there's a stress hormone called cortisol that is released from our adrenal glands. And that cortisol does a lot of things, but one of the things that it dampens is it dampens the, if you've ever taken a course of steroids, like if someone's ever put you on prednisone or a Medrol dose pack or something like that, it really affects your libido because it's going to decrease your drive. That stress hormone, when you're stressed, that's not a good time to have sex. And so it dampens your sexual drive, but also when you're on steroids, exercise is harder, your motivation a little bit harder same thing that cortisol is pumping and it's not something that's going to be good for you overall for your drive for your motivational drive either so there's a good reason for that it's very common it's physiologic and it's normal hey uh, it's about caffeine break time you want to go grab some coffee or something yep all right let's do it oh look at you big guy this is nice sorry you got to adjust that seat Can I just get a grande iced Americano? What would you like? So can I naturally get stronger erections without medications? Excellent question. The, the answer is yes, you can. So erections are about blood flow. There are lots of ways to stimulate blood flow, but the best one that I like is called eSWAT basically, but it's acoustic wave therapy. You may have heard that technology. The idea is an ultrasound type technology that, that tears down tissue so that you can build it back up. The analogy that resonates best with me is working out. So when you're working out, you're trying to tear down, let's say you're trying to build your bicep muscle. You're doing your bicep curl at the gym. You're trying to tear those small bicep muscles, so the, the microfibers, so that the body builds them back bigger and stronger, which is a good thing because everybody wants that nice bicep flex, right? But the, tech, the actual thing that we're using for the bicep is made by the body. The body's the same way all throughout, and so the penis is no different. When you use some type of micro trauma, which you can do with acoustic waves, ultrasound waves, however you want to describe them, the idea is that you're penetrating into the tissue and causing trauma. That trauma then triggers the body to release something called vascular endothelial growth factor, which stimulates a big word called neoangiogenesis. Basically, you make new blood vessels, and those new blood vessels help carry more blood flow to the penis. No medicines required with it. You can take a, a daily five milligram to Dolophil, which is generic Cialis, and that can help make that better. You can also use Botox, which is, although it is a medication, it's a one-time application that lasts for three to six months. And all of those things together are really helpful for spontaneous erections. I'm a big spontaneous erection guy. 
And so whenever I get erectile dysfunction, which I know is coming my way, then uh, I talk about it so much, it has to come my way, right? Uh, and I'm a type one diabetic, so it's gonna happen. But when it does happen, I will do acoustic wave therapy, I will do a daily five milligram Tadalafil, and I will do intracavernosal Botox or an injection of Botox into the penis. Those things are gonna get me, uh, be able to give me the best chance to have spontaneous erections without having to take a medication every single time I want an erection. And we offer all three of those therapies at Men's Pro. Man, Starbucks always smells so good. <laughs> Why do I feel confident some days and weak or soft other days? Is it my hormones? Good question. Can be. So testosterone can fluctuate based on, you know, where you are in the day, where you're, how, how physically active you've been, uh, how, how, uh, what you've eaten, et cetera, et cetera. It can, it can change day to day. And so testosterone does play a role into the erections, but also erections are very psychological. Erections have a big mental component and it doesn't mean that it's all in your head. It doesn't mean that if you have erectile dysfunction that, uh, and, and it, there is no blood flow issue, that it has to all be in your head. That's not what I'm saying, but there is a physiologic reason in the brain that causes erectile dysfunction to happen. You've got two nervous systems, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is like your fight or flight response. It's a, hey, there's a tiger in the room. It's the primitive part of your brain that says, I've either got to run or I've got to defend myself, right? So the, uh, that's the primitive part. That's the sympathetic. You're not programmed to have sex when you feel like you're in danger and have to run or fight. So that's, that's one side of the brain. The other side is the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the I'm safe, I can eat, I can have sex, things are okay. Uh, and those, those, that type of, of nervous system is when you can kind of let down, relax, and that's when you get an actual erection. So when you're nervous or when you're overthinking your erection uh, or, or, you know, gosh, I hope I don't lose this, this is a really important encounter, et cetera, et cetera, whatever that might look like, the, uh, that sympathetic nervous system starts firing and they can't both work simultaneously. So when the sympathetic turns on, parasympathetic turns off and you're, you're thinking yourself out of an erection. So those days where you're really thinking on it, man, and maybe I am softer today than I was yesterday, et cetera, you're making yourself softer by thinking about it. Now, how do you fix that? I'm a believer in that good sex leads to good sex. So my goal when I see patients that have that issue is to help them start having good sex. And there's a lot of different ways I can do that. Come see me if you wanna chat about it. But once you start having good sex, at least a good sex. It's easier to get up to the plate and swing a bat once you get a couple hits, right? Than if you strike out every time. Just makes sense. Is my testosterone low if I feel tired all the time? Possibly. So there's testosterone, low testosterone can cause lots of different symptoms. They're very vague symptoms, you know, fatigue, lack of energy, lower interest in sex. Um, lack of muscle strength, slower recovery in the gym if you're exercising, uh, lots of things, right? But they're vague. You can also have those symptoms from just not sleeping very well or having a, uh, just a stressful day. It can happen. So the, the testosterone can certainly be the issue. The only way to know is to get it checked and find out. Does lifting weights actually boost testosterone or is that a gym bro nonsense? <laughs> gym bro nonsense, I like that. Uh, that's gym bro nonsense in some regard, but there is some truth to it. So when you're lifting weights in the short term, it does boost your testosterone, but it doesn't last very long. So while you're lifting weights, your testosterone will go up. Most of the literature says that's done within 30 minutes. So lifting weights is not gonna make your testosterone higher in the long term, it's just a short term benefit. How do I check my T levels at home? The best case scenario is being in front of a provider that can give you personalized care, have the blood drawn, give you a result that day, which is that's that's why we are we really stress that here at Men's Pro is trying to give you that result that day rather than giving the blood and then having to wait. So um, I would say you need a doctor. Are testosterone boosters from a store a scam or do they work? Excellent question. Okay, so uh, they're pharmaceutical drugs and then there are supplements, right? Totally different industries. Uh, testosterone boosters are considered a supplement. They are not a controlled substance. They don't get regulated by pharmacies. So you really don't have any idea what's in them. The FDA has a food portion and then a drug portion of their governing bodies. And that's what looks at food to make sure it's safe and looks at drugs to make sure they're safe. If you look at the drugs, 
very regulated, right? Like lots of FDA rules, the, th the prescriptions that come through are vetted, they're safe, they're effective. The supplements, not regulated like a drug, they're regulated like food. So the, the bar is much lower, the, the standard that they're held to is very different. Supplements don't have any scientific data to show that they're, they're like a testosterone booster is going to increase your testosterone. I see guys every day in the clinic who say, yeah, I'd take a testosterone booster, whatever the brand may be, and their levels are still low. And uh, with testosterone, you get testosterone and your levels go up. Testosterone boosters, there's just not much science behind and I'm a science guy. Next question. Is TRT, which is testosterone replacement, safe long-term or will it mess me up? Uh, safety is, a, is, is an interesting word. All medications have risk. Testosterone is no different. There are multiple risks to testosterone. That conversation is best had with a provider so that you can weigh the, the individual risks and benefits because it's just different. But fertility is affected when you take testosterone and your body's hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis, which is called the HPG axis. Axis. So there's a chance that if you take testosterone, the hormonal axis of your body that helps you make testosterone won't ever be the same again. Uh, it's not always a very strong chance and some guys can recover, but it can negatively impact your fertility and your ability to produce your own testosterone long term. So it's not, it's not something to just be decided all of a sudden without any forethought. There can be some long term consequences of taking it. Uh, but the good thing is for young guys who might have interest in alternatives, there are ways to boost your own production of testosterone that might be a, a safer way or a way to be able to stay off of a medication long term if that's your desire. All right. Well, I, uh, these are great questions. I hope you keep them coming, but I've got somebody here I need to go take a look at. So time to get back to work.